All right, so this is really exciting. This is a patch of ramps that we transplanted from a friend's land who gave us permission to harvest. She has a really big patch, um, but it wasn't quite ready when we went to harvest. The plants were still very small. So what we did instead is we dug up a few chunks about this big and we transplanted them in a few different spots in woods that are uh, have a similar makeup of trees. So um, birch, hickory, walnut trees. They really like to live in organic matter rich soil. So this leaf litter breaking down would create that. They like a lot of sun in the spring when they're first coming up. So the fact that we're here with a bunch of trees um, that don't have their leaves yet and then um, they'll get some shade in the fall when they start to flower. So this is going to take four or five years to mature and hopefully as it matures it will spread and we will create a new healthy patch of ramps here. So we won't be harvesting for a while but we'll be keeping an eye on them. Uh, and then we did harvest more um, that were ready to go from the other land where they're more abundant and we'll be using those in a recipe. Okay so we have Brought the ramps back home, washed them nice and clean, all the dirt out from in between the leaves. The uh, roots are have been removed and we're ready to chop them. So for a compound butter, we want small pieces, maybe the size of large uh, salt granules or small lentils. That way the butter can infuse with the flavor more easily. We've got lots of small pieces spread throughout. So I'm going to um, group these in a small bunch, lining up the greens so that they all kind of start at the same spot because we want to separate the tender greens from the little bit more tough stalks and bulbs. And just working in small bunches until we get all of our quarter pound cut up and ready to make butter with. All right, so I'm just cutting through. I'm gonna set the tender tops aside because we will use those. And then lining up the stalks, making a nice tight little bundle. Going to cut through them at about a quarter inch, well, more like an eighth of an inch pieces. You can smell the really nice aroma coming through garlic, but also it's just very floral, very springy. All right, so getting down to the end, my pieces are definitely bigger, pieces of the bulbs. So I'm just gonna run the knife through this pile again and try to get anything that's more like an English pea size down to more like a large grain of salt or a small lentil. Changing the angle of your knife helps with this kind of chopping and I'm keeping the tip down for a little more control. What you don't want to do here is put your hand like this because you're potentially going to make little cuts into your hand. So make sure you can always see the tip of the knife as you're doing this and just keep going back and forth until the biggest pieces are chopped down and then you can just gather that up scoop it into a mixing bowl, and then we'll move on to the green. So to make sure I'm not add, adding any unnecessary water, I'm going to just lay out a nice clean towel and pat these dry. Just lay them out in a single layer. Well, it's not quite a single layer, they're still sort of stacked, but they don't need to be perfectly dry, just a little drier. And then roll it up and press sort of gently and then that's pretty good. So I'm going to cut these um, using a, a chiffonade cut. So sort of like if you were cutting basil or other herbs and you sort of roll them up in order to make a nice thin cut. And um, you want to use a sliding motion rather than a chopping motion. The chopping motion is going to crush and release flavors uh, now, which we don't want to do because they'll start to oxidize. So we're trying to make a nice clean cut with a nice sharp knife by sliding with a downward pressure. My knife 
is maintaining contact with the cutting board. And I'm just sort of moving my hand down as I cut to keep the pile stacked. So these are like maybe a quarter inch strips, eighth inch is fine too. Again, it's kind of up to you if you want something that's got really fine little bits in it or a little bit bigger chunks. Watch your fingers, of course. And then as I get down to this tougher area, I'm making my cuts a little bit smaller because it's a little more dense material. All right, and then I'm gonna run the knife back through this way. So perpendicular. Again, I'm still sliding, even though I'm doing a little bit of a chopping motion, I'm also sliding. All right, so that's a pretty good size, and I'm just gonna combine these with the other bits that I've cut. So a compound butter can really have any spices, herbs you want in it. Uh, what I usually do for this recipe is um, a bit of lemon zest and a bit of chili flakes or powdered chilies. Um, I really like using Aleppo uh, in this recipe. It's a nice sweet pepper with a little bit of heat. Um, but if you just have chili flakes, you know, from your spice section in your grocery store, you can definitely use those. Um, just sort of straight up how they came out of the jar. And you could also substitute orange zest instead of lemon zest or even lime zest, some other citrus. It's really up to you. Um, we're also going to be adding salt. So we have an unsalted butter here. I like buying unsalted butter so that I can control the amount of salt depending on what I'm using it for. This is a really nice hand-rolled Amish butter from a um, market, well, open-air market just down the street from us. And we've been, it's been sitting out uh, for several hours just so that it gets um, a little soft and comes to room temperature. You don't want it to be melty, but you don't also don't want it to be hard. And then um, the quality of the sea salt is going to have a big impact as well. This is a, a sea salt from Mexico and a, um, a sea salt that's not refined, like a gray sea salt, is just going to have a little more depth of flavor, a little more, more complexity to it. Um, but if you have just kosher salt or table salt, you can definitely use that as well. So the first thing we're going to do is zest the lemons. Um, if you have a zester like this with a handle on it, I recommend uh, holding the lemon in your hand and zesting where you can see the zest coming through. You might be able to see the oils squirting out. If you have a microplane, that's even better. This one's sort of um, scraping the skin in a way that's releasing a lot of the oils, um, which is okay, but Part of what this does, um, holding the lemon like this, is allows me to see what I'm doing and see where the zest has been scraped away because you don't really want to scrape the white pith off if possible. That's a little on the bitter side. Whereas all the really nice oils are in the skin. So once you've got um, your lemon zested, you can just knock that zest right into the bowl with the ramps. So I won't have you watch me do all of this zesting, but for, um, for two pounds of butter, which is what we have here, I'd recommend either one large lemon or two small. So these are a little on the small side, so I am gonna zest both of these fully. Okay, so I've got the lemon zest in there from the two lemons. You can save these for something else. And then um, I'm gonna start with one teaspoon of salt. Uh, we can always, the nice thing about this recipe is you can taste it as you go and you can always add more of things. So I'm just gonna sprinkle that in, one teaspoon of salt. And then I'm gonna do the same, about a teaspoon of chili flakes. Sprinkle that in. All right, so I'm gonna mix that around so everything's sort of well distributed. And then we are actually going to take um, just maybe four tablespoons of this butter and we're going to melt it in a frying pan and we're going to cook these just a little bit, just enough to wilt them, cook off a little bit of the moisture, bring out the flavor, um, but we're gonna keep them nice and bright so that we don't have too much of a cooked flavor. 
have um, sauteed everything in butter and smells amazing. There's this really nice aromatic smells coming up. I can smell the lemon zest. I can smell the chili flakes. And um, the nice thing about this technique, there's several different ways to make uh, ramp compound butter. What I like about this is that if our butter is a little bit cold, adding this warm um, element is going to help melt the butter just a little bit to make it soften up. So we're just going to scrape that into, this is the KitchenAid mixer bowl. I've got the rest of the butter in there. And I'm going to scrape this in. All the good bits. And then I'm going to use a paddle attachment for the blending of everything. So once we lift this up, get the attachment on. And um, you might have some splashing and things trying to pop up, so you definitely want to start slow. So turn on to the slowest setting and turn it back off. So I'm just going to do that a couple times until I get the liquid incorporated with the solid butter. If you've a hot day and your butter sat out and it's way too soft you could just take this whole mixing bowl um, set it in the refrigerator for five minutes or so and then bring it back out working with butter is all about getting the temperature right so starting to splash out on me a bit just go, going really really slow to avoid that as much as possible chunks have broken up enough now that there's a little bit of splashing still happening but the softened melted butter is starting to incorporate with the room temperature butter and it's looking a little bit on the liquidy side I'm gonna let it just keep going and see if it's when it's fully incorporated because what we want is something solid but soft we don't want it hard at all. We want um, something that eventually we can use a spoon and portion it into some parchment paper, make little rolls, and put it in the freezer. Um, we always store compound butter in the freezer because once you introduce any kind of moisture to butter, which previously has been worked out of the butter milk, um, you need to keep it in the freezer unless you're using it in the next couple of days. Otherwise, it will start to sour. And though cultured butter is a thing people do on purpose, um, sometimes done by accident, the flavors can be a little bit off. So I'm gonna try tilting this, see if you can see it. In fact, I'm gonna try running it tilted. It's a little risky, but kind of see. So I'm keeping it on the lowest setting the whole time and it's starting to become like a nice peanut butter consistency. I'm gonna turn the speed up a little bit now because we've got some smaller chunks in there that just don't seem to be incorporating. We don't want to have uh, chunks of unflavored butter in our compound butter. We want everything to be fully incorporated. see I'll set it on slow again so you can kind of see how it moves but that is what we have it's looking pretty good so let's open the or lift up the top rather and we're gonna need a spatula to scrape all the butter off the paddle scrape down the sides and I'm just gonna do one more mix by hand to make sure everything's really well incorporated. All right, so 
We don't want to waste any of this, so do your best to get every little bit off. And as you can see, it's really soft. So this is probably too soft to package in parchment. So I think what I'm going to do after I give this one more mix is I'm actually going to stick it in the refrigerator for a bit and let it stiffen up just a little. Um, you don't want to forget about it because then you'll have to let it sit out and soften again but I'm gonna give it five, maybe 10 minutes. And then, um, and then I will package it up. You could, if you wanted to, if you were just gonna store this in a tub, like, um, you know, a quart jar with a wide mouth, something like that, you could put it into that now, and then it will just be um, in the refrigerator ready for you when you wanna use it. Sometimes mixers don't get all the way to the bottom, so I'm just kind of making sure everything's really well incorporated here. So um, I really like making little compound butter rolls with parchment paper uh, because I like to keep them in the freezer until I use them and I like to just cut off what I use. So versus digging hard butter out of a container, you can just take a nice sharp knife cut off a coin or two for a small meal or use a whole stick of it in a recipe, whatever you want. It's a really nice way to store it. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge and then we will package it. Okay, so after 10 or so minutes in the fridge, this is looking um, like a nice consistency. It's not gonna be too oily and ooze out when I try to roll it up, but it's still nice and soft. Um, so I'm just going to use a scale so that I know how much I'm putting on this so I don't end up putting on too much and having it squish out and make a big mess. Um, I'm measuring in grams, you can do this however you want. I'm using an eight inch by six inch piece of parchment paper that I just folded and cut. Um, you could make bigger or smaller logs if you want. So I just have a regular um, sort of soup spoon and that gets me about 50 grams. So let me just see how that rolls up. And if it works well, I will stick to 50 grams. If not, I can adjust. So what you wanna do is fold it up toward you and then use something like a spoon or a butter knife, something that's not super sharp but has a nice hard edge to it to roll, to make a nice roll so that the butter's not sort of squishing out in between the layers. And then once you've got that rolled, then you can squeeze the ends, sort of like making a saltwater taffy or a caramel. And I'm twisting them at the same time, which is sort of pushing out and making a nice perfect little cylinder. So it's not gonna look like this on your first try. You are gonna get butter on your hands, so have a towel nearby to clean them off. Um, but that's basically what we want. And the nice thing about the parchment paper is you can write ramp butter, you could write all your ingredients on there or, um, or in a notebook, but just sort of name it and, and write the date on there so that you know how fresh it is. So then I would just kind of keep going with that. Um, again, like if you're someone who's cooking you know, large amounts of food for large parties and that's what you're using this for, maybe you wanna make a little bit of a bigger roll. But if you're thinking you're gonna give these away as gifts or you just wanna use a little bit on your toast in the morning, I think this um, 50 grams is a good amount. Um, again, I'm pressing, i try to do it from this angle so you can see, sort of pressing the butter that's squishing out up. I've still got some room on the ends where there's no butter here so that I have room to pinch it and twist. This one got a little close, so I'm gonna squish it to the other side. So obviously, if you put too much in, it's just gonna squish all over the place. Um, this is like right on the edge, I am getting some squish. So I would maybe take a, um, a Tupperware, some kind of container you can seal and fill these fill it up with these, put them in the freezer, or put them in a Ziploc bag um, because you wanna keep any sort of freezer flavors out. Butter, part of why it's so great for this recipe, butter absorbs flavor. You don't want it to absorb uh, freezer flavors. So 
parchment plus the plastic bag should do a really good job of that. So now that you've got all this lovely ramp butter, what are you going to do with it? Well, um, it makes great gifts, obviously. Um, as far as recipes go, anything where you would be using leeks or onions and garlic, um, you can use this. It's just sort of ready to go. You've got all the flavor there. Say you are um, cooking clams, uh, start out with this instead of regular butter, little white wine, steam them till they open, super delicious. Uh, scrambled eggs, um, this will make your scrambled eggs just really sing, uh, just a little dollop of that. Um, you can spread it on baguette or toast. You could start a frittata with it. Um, really great in white beans, really great for finishing any kind of meat, say you grilled lamb or steak and it's cooked to perfection, just spreading a little bit of this ramp butter on it before serving will really elevate it. And the possibilities are endless. It's super delicious. Um, a really unique flavor element just to have at the ready, handy in your freezer to make any dish really sing.